Kids, there will come a time during your formative years where your parents will want to have the talk with you. And that talk will involve them saying that one fine day you'll be old and wonder where the time all went. So enjoy your youth now because it's fleeting. One fine day you'll be in the ground and you will realize that this life is fleeting. Enjoy it, kids. And you will simply counter with your own hard, cold truth and say, I don't want to grow up because if I did, I wouldn't be a Toys R Us kid. I'm going to take off the second star on the right and straight on till morning and go to the magical world of Neverland where time has no meaning, the adventure never stops, and of course, you never, ever, ever have to worry about growing a day, even a second older. And... In regards to those adventures, you can witness Peter Pan, Wendy, and the Lost Boys take on the villainous, vile, and vicious Captain Hook. <sighs> God. They did another version of this for no goddamn reason. Peter Pan and Wendy is a Disney Plus exclusive slash original written and directed by David Lowry, who did the 2016 version of Pete's Dragon, a movie so unremarkable and just so uninspired that I actually forgot it existed. Not that the original Pete's Dragon was a world beater, but it certainly had more life and energy than the 2016 version. He also did a ghost story that was interesting, and The Green Knight that was also interesting. An A24 offering that maybe didn't quite reach the peak of other A24 movies, but was very visually impressive and had life and energy and weirdness. And you got Peter Pan and Wendy. I don't know how many versions of the Peter Pan story has been told, you know, from the novel by J.M. Barry, <clears throat> but from the Disney version and various others and everything and, you know, short series and what, they had like a 2003 version, I think they had one in 2015, 16, that failed miserably at the box office. They spent a fortune on that. And this is, yes, the latest offering from Disney just basically churning out live action movies but basically not trusting the theater audiences would gravitate towards them much like they uh, <clears throat> just decided to shove out the 2022 pinocchio movie no not the del toro version but the robert zemeckis one where i swear he was held hostage or his family was held hostage until he made that as bland and boring as possible and it wasted tom hanks on a 150 million dollar budget this has jude law's captain hook and it has really nothing else um, I'm not going to lie to you, if you don't know much about the Peter Pan story, well, this movie might be kind of okay for you. If you have seen any version of Peter Pan, even going back to the 1950s version, which has its own issues, just <clears throat> read up on that one, how they dealt with the uh, voice of Peter Pan and all that, and good God, Disney certainly loves to treat people badly. <clears throat> but no, they've turned over a new queef with this. Also, Toby Halbrooks, uh, who also uh, wrote Pete's Dragon and produced The Green Knight, had something to do with this. And David Lowry apparently enjoyed this because it was based on his favorite book as a kid. Okay, book, movie, doesn't really matter. If he had fun making it, that's fine. Could he have made it halfway interesting, though? Here, here's the plot of the movie, such as it is. Peter commits uh, multiple kidnapping charges to take people off to Neverland where they never have to worry about growing up and they can always be happy and everything. They can be free to do what they want any old time. And, well, there's a few connotations or a few ways to interpret this whole thing with, uh, <laughs> with um, Peter Pan. Basically, he kidnaps people or he is the Grim Reaper taking uh, dying children off into the afterlife. And also, Peter Pan is clearly the villain of the whole goddamn thing. And this... This movie, I didn't expect much from it. I mean, I'm going to be perfectly honest. Steven Spielberg's Hook is one of the few versions that actually tried to, you know, twist around. Maybe not twist around the story, but tell it in a bit of a different direction. Even if I didn't care for Hook, I'll at least give it credit there. Plus, I had Spielberg's life and energy and had Robin Williams. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. When Jude Law is the biggest actor that you have in a movie that comes out in 2023, you have issues. You have, And that's nothing against Jude Law. But his time has passed. His time has absolutely passed. He is about here, and there, and basically he's being treated like he's up here. Because we have Peter Pan, Alexander Maloney, and you have Wendy Darling, uh, Ever Anderson, which sounds like the name of a pop star. And you have Tiger Lily, Alyssa. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the last name. Look it up. If you can pronounce it, please tell me how. Shmi, a.k.a. Uh, Hook's 
um, you know, I guess second hand man, so to speak, or right hand man, which kind of makes sense since he has a hook on his hand, a hook on a guy named Hook. I know. Jim Gaffigan was Smee. Almost didn't recognize him because Jim Gaffigan can be funny. He wasn't allowed to be funny in this. Yeah, basically there's Wendy, her brothers. Peter Pan finds his shadow in their room for some reason. It's never, I mean, obviously it's explained in the book, stuff like that, and it's fancy. But see, at least in other versions, they sort of told, like, this was just, oh, everybody knows, so we're just going to make it uninspired and lazy as possible. Tinkerbell's also there. And he gets a shadow, sews it onto his foot. <clears throat> and your your heart is in your foot. Well, yeah, isn't yours? And then they go off to Neverland. They go through Big Ben, and then they have adventures that qualify basically with a couple musical numbers that... I swear everybody was on goddamn Somas, and the Lost Boys are confused about Wendy, and it's, oh, you're the Wendy, maybe you're an imposter Wendy, we're not sure we want to trust you. And then they trust her, because Peter Pan ends up um, <coughs> going off for a bit, and then her brothers get captured, and Peter must try to save the day, and then Wendy must try to save the day. All while Jude Law seems to be sleepwalking through this goddamn thing. It's so mind-numbingly lacking in, like, everything. Special effects are bad. Those flying effects are really, really bad. Not as bad as Puma Man, he flies like a moron. But for a 2023 release, I mean, even something from 2013, even something from 2003, this, this was not good. I didn't expect much from this, but no wonder they put this damn thing out on Disney+. Plus. It just ended up being mind-numbingly lacking in anything good. All the edges, everything was sanded off. It was all safe and sanitized. And the differences they tried to tell with the story and everything, or at least tell it in a different way, weren't any good. <laughs> you didn't... They had the crocodile show up. The crocodile that had the clock in its goddamn stomach and everything, and the ticking would always scare Captain Hook. And that doesn't really go anywhere. The croc is in, like, one goddamn scene. I could spoil a lot of this, but I'll save it for... The spoiler section, but spoiling this will not haunt you at all. If you have a Disney Plus subscription, your kids may enjoy it. But if you, even if you didn't grow up on the animated version, because that would mean that you're closing in on 80. I mean, 70 or 80 at this point, because that came out in 53. And this coincided with the release of the 1953 version. That's why I'm just getting to it a couple days later. It just ends up not being good. And this also has to be... And I'm not even knocking the acting. But as far as the presentation of the character, the Peter Pan character has to be the most annoying goddamn, you know, bland little shit that I've seen in a while. Even more so than the 2003 version, because I think they at least tried to do something there. But this was not good. This was not good at all. Also, I hate the fact that people were all upset and, you know, the people were getting out their pitchforks and their hand grenades and clutching their pearls because there were lost girls and lost boys. And also they had an actor with Down syndrome playing one of the lost boys and apparently that pissed people off. <laughs> I don't know why it pissed people off, but that's weird. So what? Let people, let, let, let people act. Let people act if they're good people. Doesn't matter. That's all I got to say about that. It is on Disney+. Plus. Check it out if you want. Three, two, one, and... Spoilers there. That's your warning. Okay, so it turns out that Peter Pan and Captain Hook were <clears throat> actually friends. Captain Hook missed his mother, took off, and then came back all evil and jaded by the real world. Because, like Rob Thomas said from Matchbox 20, he wished the real world would stop hassling him. Also... Wendy has to eventually save the day. She has to think happy thoughts or whatever and be able to float away when she's forced to walk the plank. Peter gets stabbed and then saved by Tiger Lily, who I have to... The Tiger Lily actress, I think, actually does the best she can here. They try, try like a Native American type thing, like it's Peter and Tiger Lily that are brother and sister. And there's also some issues about, you know, children that are older than Peter being taken, like, the, the you know, as far as the storytelling. Um, the interactions between Shmi and Captain Hook are basically put into the goddamn background. Everything about it just feels sanitized and pasteurized. Um, you can't, you, you can't have any clocks because Hook gets all scared. And any of the stuff they tried with Peter and Hook eventually, you know, trying to have common ground since, you know, they were friends. Peter realizing he's the villain of this whole damn thing. 
<sighs> it just, it doesn't feel organic. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like anything the kids would necessarily enjoy. I can't imagine too many kids liking this version. You could show them the 2003 version. They might enjoy it. Show them 53 version and explain <laughs> when they're a little bit older what happened to the vo the kid that voiced Peter Pan. Trust me, it's freaking frightening. But this is Neverland where nothing ever changes, including the generic nature of this movie, because nothing feels good about nothing feels good, nothing feels holy, you know, not, not even original, because you can take a story and you can twist it around only so many times. But if you tell it at least in an entertaining way, you can make something kind of inspired. No, nope, you just have this. And then the Lost Boys and Wendy end up um battling back and Captain Hook ends up um ends up falling in the water, and then basically they, Peter takes the ship back, takes them all home, and it turns out that this used to be Peter's home, but he was upset at his mother, you know, yelling at him, and then he took off and never came back, and he won't come back, but all the lost boys and lost girls are living at Wendy's house. How many bedrooms does that house have? How many, it's like, are they going to have to double up? Are they going to have to triple up? How many bunk beds are they going to have? Do the parents have enough money? These are important questions. They were just ignored. And he leaves. And then he takes off to back to Neverland. Hook and Schmier are still around. And then here's Peter. And maybe they're going to be friends. Maybe they're not. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't care. I don't care. Peter Pan and Wendy gets an F. It's uninspired. It's lazy. It's boring. Very, very boring. Very... Very boring. So much so that I had to basically say the word boring a whole bunch to finish up this whole thing. Yeah, F. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.